Travis. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to our very first LinkedIn Live. We are here doing the Stay or Go series, our very first on LinkedIn. And I'm so excited to welcome everyone today. I'm here with my buddy, Travis Roberts. Hey, Travis. Hey, good to see you. Hey. I am Bria Starmer. I am the founder of Lions and Tigers. Uh, we are a flexible and fractional consultancy that centers women and underrepresented folks in fractional consulting work in across enterprises. Um, and so in our work and what we do every day, we're often called in to points of pivot, points when people are making decisions about how they run their organizations to build cultures of belonging, how they think about blended workforces, merging employees and non-employees, and trying to create sort of high performance environments. And so in my job, I get to talk with a lot of folks who are making these big choices about how they demonstrate impact. And so we've got this series called Stay or Go, inspired by the 1989 Clash song, Stay or Go, because so much is happening in where talent is choosing to work right now. And I just have this question sitting on my mind around why folks are choosing to work the way that they're working. Do they wanna stay in traditional employment, in the nine to five, in the corporate gigs, choosing that path and that kind of impact? Or do they wanna choose something more flexy, something more fractional uh, and have impact in different ways? There are pros and cons to both. And we're gonna dig in with leaders who sit in both categories and talk about why they're making their own choices. I'm so excited to have Travis with us today. Travis and I, and I met 21 years ago at a frat party. And we have been friends oh, ever right. since. <laughs> and he was so kind to jump on with us um, and talk about some of the work that he's doing at Zillow. And so, Travis, if you could just introduce yourself, sort of like what your life is and what your job is, and then we can dig in. Yeah, thank you for having me on here. It is wow, I think it's been that long since we actually met. Um, yeah, again, my name is Travis Roberts. I work at Zillow. I am a senior director overseeing the enterprise rental sales team at Zillow. Um, I'm also a husband to an amazing wife. I have three beautiful children. Um, so I kind of have a multifaceted roles that, I, that I'm constantly involved with, but it, it keeps my cup full. Now, Travis. Okay, so this all came about, honestly, you inspired this whole series because we were at lunch. We were talking a bit about your work at Zillow and we're gonna get to that. There's some stories that I really want you to share. But I want you to know that you had such an impact on me and on the team at Lions and Tigers that inspired this whole series for us to dig into this question. Not that you're debating which way to go, but the way that you show up, and I called it the unexpected ally, because I don't think everyone knows about this if they just saw you walking down the street. So this is our attempt at interviewing you a little bit to get behind the curtain. Right. And so my first question for you, Travis, is why are you staying in? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, it's one that I've debated with at different points in my career, but I think I kind of had to make a realization of myself. I, I used to be one of those, those people that everything I did, I wanted to be all in on. Like, it doesn't matter if it was work, family, friends, hobbies, hiking, HOA. Like, it's like I was in, I was all in. And what I finally realized is I was going like, you know, it's like the age old saying, I was going a mile wide and an inch deep. I wasn't making enough impact anywhere because I was spreading so thin. And so I had that realization that if I want to make true impact, if I want to be like an inch wide, a mile deep and truly make change, I had to pick a couple lanes where I was going to invest fully into. And so I once I kind of like really sat down and looked at that. I realized it's work and it's my children, because if I do that right, like if I could be in a corporate environment like Zillow and I can influence leaders who influence their teams, that ripple effect is coast to coast. I affect families, people, livelihoods. And I can also do it with my children, and that's generational. If I, I can create and, and help grow really amazing children that can help the next generation, that leaves lasting impact. So I kind of went all in on that area. So when it comes to stay or go, I believe my impact right now is the greatest by staying in and why I choose to continue to hang out my hat at Zillow for almost 12 years now. Oh, I think you've summarized that so well. And, you, and it's something that I struggle with. I think we both, especially if you're multi-passionate, right? And you think... Yeah. I can, I can, if I just did a little bit here or a little bit there, like I can move the ball forward. Um, but that sort of focus, that maniacal focus is, is, is the, is a hallmark of a great leader. And so 
you mentioned staying in at Zillow and I want to know more about that and the fact that you've been there for 12 years and that that's the place where you have I've probably grown uh, uh, the yeah. most. I've yeah. never seen that in you and that you really have like sort of doubled down on making that community better. When you think about that circle at Zillow, like talk to me about Zillow when you first joined 12 years ago and then yeah. what you're seeing now. Yeah, I mean, one of the things why I think I've hung my hat here so long is because it's it, they've created a frame in which I can do this. Like I can make an impact. Like it's a, it's a company that's really focused on doing right by its people and by by consumers. And so when you think about the mission of Zillow, I'm all in there. So that's great. But it's like when I can come every day and and live it out, and it's not like you know, it's, a lot of you hear startup life. Like I joined Zillow before it went public, and like cool, you got all these like cool things to go with it, work life balance, all this stuff. And then a lot of times it goes public, and you lose that. Like mm -hmm. we haven't lost that. I mean, for almost 12 years now my work ends at four like that's when my family time starts and especially in sales that's unheard of that's an unheard of that you can have a like a normal working set of hours but work somewhere that you really love to work at usually you have to make some trade-offs so zillow has created a frame and then over the years that frame to me has gotten better to where i feel like my impact can be that much greater because of the roles that i'm in and the people that i work with mm. And so those opportunities afforded to you certainly um, are based on your performance and, and sort of growing with the company. But uh, I also want you to talk a little bit about, I called you the unexpected ally, because uh, you've told me some stories of the work that you've done at Zillow to represent folks that are like you, but also not like you. And so can you share with uh, the listeners here some of the work that you've done to raise voices and make change? Yeah, I, th I think for a long time, I didn't realize that I was the solution, like uh, that I it has to start with me if I want something to change. It doesn't mean other people can't be their own solutions, but I if I want to see change, I have to be the change. And so I took over the enterprise team here in the rentals division about a little over three years ago, and, and I, I took over a great team. I mean, it's wonderful human beings. They, they they hit the numbers they were supposed to hit, like they, they met all the goals they needed to meet. Like there was, there was nothing wrong with the team foundationally, except for the fact it wasn't representative of the industry in which we serve, the company, the society. And what I mean by that, and I'll be very, very candid, is the team was all white. There was only 20% women. There was no women in leadership. We had no BIPOC representation. Everybody lived in one city except for one other. It's like, when you look at that, that, that doesn't, that's not a dream team. Like that's a, that's a good team. They could perform. But to me, I looked at that and said, you know, as a white male, I'm like, it can be more like we, it needs to be more. And so, I'm just really fortunate that I work with amazing people that I could take this to. So I went straight to my VP and my manager at the time, Jamie, and said, I want to change fundamentally how this team looks and it's gonna take me time. Like it's not something you can do overnight and it's not something you wanna do overnight. It's systematically changing the way in which you recruit, you hire, you train, you develop all of that to get to an end result that again is that representative dream team you're looking for. And luckily I have amazing managers that work with me as well. Sean and Darren, they're phenomenal at all of us aligning towards this mission. And to show you kind of how far we've come in three years, we went from a completely white team to now we have 28% BIPOC representation. The team went from 20% women to now we're a little over 40% women. We went from geographies, I think we were in two geographies, that's only if you count the one employee that didn't live where everybody else did. And now we're in, I think, 11 different geographies which make up every different time zone. We had zero women in leadership development. Now 66% of our leadership development, women from my are on my team are women. It's like we're making, and we're not done yet. Like this is just step by step by step, but it has to be a concerted effort. And again, it goes back to, it had to start with me. Like I, I had to make a conscious saying like, we will make a change. And then Sean was like, yep, I'm with you. Darren's like, yep, I'm with you. Jamie's like, yep, I'm with you. And it's like, you slowly create that snowball effect. And now it's just how we operate. And it's really, really been empowering. And the team itself, has just done phenomenal things since kind of making some of these shifts. Hmm. When I hear from you, my shoulders lower. I exhale a little bit. I like the the tightness in my body relaxes a little bit, Travis. And that's why I wanted people to hear from you because so often I'm reading reports. I'm looking at like labor statistics. I'm reading about the great resignation and the loss of women and people of color from our workplaces. And, and I feel often like I'm just yelling into a closet. And so when I hear leaders like you that say it starts with me and that something had to change and that I hold myself accountable for it, uh, it, it 
makes me realize like that there is potential here that my children, my daughter, my kids can inherit a different work environment uh, because people like you are willing to make that that shift. Thank you. But I will say I, I'm not the, you know, the inventor of the wheel here. I, I by no means is this something that is like inherent to like who I am or to Zill. I mean, at the end of the day, like Bria, the work with that you are doing at Lions and Tigers with your team, that is, is foundationally changing the game. I mean, the playbook that you created, I think I've read through it like three or four different times this week. Like it's one of those ones that it creates it's, it's almost like I feel like I'm walking in the footsteps of giants, like people that are doing this on a massive scale. And like I have my slice of the pie. But again, that's the impact that I can do today. Yeah. And it, hopefully that scales. Hopefully that impact continue to grow. But this is where I'm at. But it's fun to see that it's happening in so many different ways, especially at Lions and Tigers. It's like it's pretty remarkable. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, I mean, I think we all have got a little slice, right? Like we've all got these little bits of, of, of pieces that we can move forward and, um, and and we're privileged to do this work in so many ways. And to, to your point, I mean, there's a lot of folks that come before us, um, but, uh, but there is little bits that we can move, that we can do and that we can think about it differently. I'll also share this story from, uh, we were at an event um, at my house and uh, we, had, we brought to a collection of leaders together. We called it the power of and event so that we could kind of have these conversations about what, what aeons we want in our lives, not what wars we want in our lives, inspired by the lions and tigers concept. And you were telling the story of advocating for a paternity leave policy or parental leave policy. Um, and one of the moms in the room was sharing about some of the struggles she was having um, showing up at work. And I remember my friend Karen said from the other side, like, go talk to Travis, like he knows how to get it done. And like the idea that we could create alliances cross company, cross sector with the sort of ins and outs of how you're negotiating for your team um, is also something that I just am craving right now. So uh, maybe if you could give perhaps folks listening one or two little pieces of advice about how you've been able to land some of these company-wide yeah. policies or impacts um, and like the actual scripts that you use or something. Yeah, like that's yeah. the stuff you need. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to me, it, it's, it comes down to a simple premise. You you have to meet people where they are. And, and in a way, I feel like COVID opened everybody's eyes up to be like, be real, like, like tell people how, if you're having a, like, you know, crap day, say it, like, it's okay to be who you are. Like this morning, I took my son to the ER because he cracked his head open and blood was all over the upstairs of my house. Like that was part of my day. I went from a zoom meeting to the ER and back to a zoom meeting when I came back. And it was yeah. like, that's, I'm not going to hide that. Like that's that part of that experience. You know, when you mentioned kind of the policy around parenting, mm -hmm. to me, it kind of, it stemmed from the fact that, you know, we had our first, well, then we had multiple miscarriages before we got pregnant with, with our twins and we used some science help to get there. And I'm very open about all this. I, I say it any team media, I don't hold anything back because that's my journey. And sometimes being open about that opens up other people's journeys as well, because a lot of the times when parents were coming back from leaves, whether they have you know no time off from their work, whether they have a month off, two months, five months, depending on their policy, that's not an easy transition. That's not an easy transition for parents to, to get back into the workforce and why you see so many parents leave the workforce. So right away, I was like, we have to continue to work in that area. Like, how do we create policy and, and systems in place to allow parents to have a softer landing when they come back from that? And that's kind of where it started. So my team and I, we worked really, really hard on creating almost a checklist. Like, hey, if you're a manager of somebody that goes out, Here's how you bring them back into the fold smoothly. And Zillow has some great all up policy there. But we took it that next step of being like, how do you actually have that conversation? Like, how do you open that up to where you let you meet that employee where they are? And then that even snowballed into the fact that I had twins and Zillow has phenomenal benefits. Like, don't get me wrong. But a lot of companies, including Zillow, look at twins as one one pregnancy and the benefits follow that, which sure but i'm pretty sure i was in that or and there was definitely two babies <laughs> delivered and so you know i look at that i was like those parents parents of multiples which are on the rise right with science related yeah. help like multiple babies are going to keep going up and a lot of times those babies are born early which means nicu time which means less bonding time so i'm a huge advocate for like how do we create better and i i won't benefit from this my kids are you know they're almost two now i won't benefit from this policy but that next parent of twins, triplets, or, you know, like however many kids they're having, like, I really would love if we create a frame for them to really have an exceptional experience there. And that's just one of the small slivers, something I'm like, as you can tell, I'm super passionate about, because if we get this right, that impact is unbelievable. Absolutely. I mean, we know from data that, that 
uh, caretakers are likely the largest single identifier population within an organization, upwards of 79% are caring for somebody in some way. And so I've always said, if we solve the, the work world for caretakers, we'll solve it for everybody. Um, so many folks are having to show up in this space now. So it's incredible that the kind of impact you have when you think about it that way. So I've got one more question for you and we're gonna wrap up soon because this is a quick series. I'm thinking about the highly relational work that you do. Of course, you're a people first leader, but I'm thinking about all of the work that you do to drive sales and uh, the relationships that you hold. And I'm so curious about your thoughts around sort of AI and tech and how that will impact both your teams and then also the relationships you hold with your customers. Yeah, it, it's huge. Uh, in yeah. a way it's coming and we can't avoid it. And people want to try, they want to try to look the other way, close their eyes, it's not gonna happen, but it's happening. Like the AI revolution is here and it's not gonna go anywhere. To me, it has a potential to change everything for the better or for the worse, but it mm. takes people today making choices that make it for the better. Like if we can use AI to get rid of all the monotonous work, to give people back time in their days so they can spend more time with their families, that's a win. But if AI comes in and make people work harder and, and not provide that benefit on the, on the personal side of it, it's a loss. Like to me, I see it as an easy equation. It's, it's all about essentialism. Like you have to create space for yourself. And I'm, I'm very much to the camp and I'm first to admit it. I work to live. I don't live to work. And it, I want AI to, to, to help me there. I want AI to free up that time so I can do things that are meaningful versus like just the, you know, the simple routine stuff. So I'm excited for it, but it's going to take leaders to really lean in right now and figure out how to operationalize it in the best possible way. Mm, I love that, Travis. Um, we are going to wrap up our time. I want to thank you so much and also just Travis. offer, Travis mentioned our playbook. Um, it's linked in the comments below. Uh, there's a huge, it's basically an open source guide to how to create blended workforces, teams of employees and non-employees and bringing them together under a culture of belonging. Lions and Tigers is a proud change management partner, helping unite leaders and teams together. And if we can be useful uh, to you as leaders, as you think about crafting the now of work, uh, we would love to do that. And so uh, I look forward to future conversations and Travis, Likewise. so much impact to come. Thank you for joining us today on our first series and uh, we'll see you soon. Love it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Bye take all. care. Bye.